What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to Project Dits. You are in to plus added time. My name once again is Nathan, and I have a co-host, I have a friend, a colleague, a lover. It's Dara Gibbons. Dara, welcome to the world of podcasting. Nathan, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, new start for me. Can't wait to get started. Yeah, you're like, this is like when a teenager gets on trial, uh, gets a trial at a Premier League side. Well, I won't say Premier League, maybe maybe League One. You know, let's let's be let's be honest here. Yeah, true. We are <laughs> Preston are in the Championship, aren't they? Sorry, Preston. I was about to be really disrespectful to you. <laughs> Who's in League One? Uh, Sunderland. <laughs> we are Sunderland. Hell, I die. That was a good show. Um, so let the people know, A, who you are, and B, the obvious question that I'm sure the listeners are sat there going, who do you support? Who do you support? I support Liverpool. I'm one of them. You know, I had a, had a rough time growing up, you know, 18 years of kind of nothingness. But last few years, they've got good. So, you know, now I can wear my jersey out in public. It's true. Perfect. Me, of course, being a wonderful United fan. Wonderful, or absolutely wonderful. I'm right. the best sort of United fan. Okay, I don't think there's any good type of United fan, though. Probably not. No, there's, <laughs> no, there's just no good type of football fan. That is a good point. And if you said it, then it must be true. <laughs> exactly. That's why I'm in. That's why I'm in charge. <laughs> so we're just going to cover the the Premier League weekend and then any other games that we want to that we want to cover. So we're not going to talk about the Champions League. Uh, one because the time of recording it hasn't started yet, and two because we don't want to. Uh, so we'll, we'll kick things off with with we might as well do the early kickoff Saturday lunchtime, tucking into your toast and beans to watch the Merseyside derby, at Goodison Park. Everton, of course, taking on Liverpool. Premier League champions. Controversial match. Premier League champions, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I get that Premier in there champion. Uh, Taking on a rejuvenated... Uh, I don't know if I could say rejuvenated, because in my lifetime, Everton had never been good. <laughs> uh, finally good. <laughs> Everton side under Carlo Ancelotti. So a very different Merseyside derby to the one that saw Everton's first team lose to your under-8s last season. <laughs> oh, true, true, true. <laughs> Yeah, that was a hard uh, game, wasn't it? <laughs> what What did you make of a the match and we of course the the offside that rocked the world? <laughs> well, obviously, first of all, going into the game, everything we're kind of seen as equal to Liverpool, and for in my lifetime at least, you know, that's a first. After, um, especially after you know the defeat to Aston Villa, I'll get that out of the way now. <laughs> but um, you know, going into it, I was I was confident, but I wasn't like dead certain that we were going to win, if you know what I mean. Obviously with still no Allison, still no signs of him returning. So Adrian in goal. And um, yeah, it was a good start. Mane scored early, which I was happy with. It was a really nice build to play, uh, I thought, in between. Um, and then for me, the turning point of the match was ball into the box. Virgil van Dijk claimed to be offside. You know, a bit of, bit of mm, not sure about that. But um Jordan Pickford's tackle on Van Dijk. What did you make of it, Nathan? It was a bad tackle. Uh, first off, no, in no way do I think Pickford obviously meant to do it. It's one of those where the goalkeeper's going for the ball and he's absolutely smashed into someone. But it was very poor. Uh, it was a sending off. I don't think there's any doubt about it. Yep. But something that's completely out of everyone's control on the pitch is this absolute nonsense rule that meant that they couldn't do anything about it did yeah they did i at at the time i didn't know anything about it i didn't realize that it actually could have been given a red card i was watching um, the bt coverage of it and they had um ex-ref peter walton on as a uh, pundit for the game and the actual rule is that you can pick for it could have been mm. sent off even though if van dyke was on side or not because he could have been sent off for violent conduct as opposed to serious foul play if the ball was in play. Yeah, but that's sort of come out after the fact, but <clears throat> it, it's, it says a lot about where we are in terms of the rules in the Premier League, that you've got good referees and good officials officiating the game, and then they don't know what the rules are anymore. They do, they do. And 
you know, there's been a lot of talk in like this season in particular about the pitch side monitor. The ref being allowed to look at the pitch side monitor. And it's surprising that um, the fourth official or the VAR referee didn't, you know, have a word in the referee's ear and go, look, you might have a look at this. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, this, it's just it's this implication of VAR that has just been so poor Yeah. Uh, at times. It was definitely a red card. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the reaction some people have where they seem to be going after Jordan Pickford. True, for, true, true. It wasn't his fault. He didn't intentionally yeah. do anything. He's a goalie going for the ball. Yeah. And but it 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 sucks for Liverpool. And it sucks for Van Dijk, who's such a wonderful player. And I'm sure there'll be a few people out there rubbing their hands <clears throat> together because Liverpool are kind of going to be a little bit there for the taking. Mm-hmm. But I don't think it's as bad as everyone makes out because I don't think Gomez and Matip they're not a bad combo. They're no, not they're... Virgil Van Dijk. But they're solid. Yeah. No, no, they're a very good combo. I think Joel Matip in particular is definitely, uh, well, obviously the more senior of the two. But mm. I, th- I think he's a very good footballer. The thing is, though, Matip in particular injuries. Matip is Matip seems to get injured every. I don't think he's ever got a run of like 15, 20 games, which is, you know, Van Dijk has gone two seasons consecutively without missing a game in the Premier League or Champions League. So that's you know that's consistency. And Joe Gomez, I mean. He's no kid anymore. He's he's 23 going on 24. But, you know, it's time for him to step up, I think, anyways. But I was actually doing a bit of digging, a bit of research uh, for a change. And I looked up the last, the games that Virgil van Dijk has actually missed uh, since joining Liverpool. He's only, he's only missed five that he would have started regardlessly, which is mental in. He signed 1st of January 2018. So he's missed he's missed five games in nearly three years of football, which is ridiculous. Do you know what I mean? That's mad. And I think you do have the other option of uh, it doesn't sound good or good, but I think when I've watched him actually play at centre half, been pretty good of dropping Fabinho back. Fabinho was very good, very good. He had a run last season. I remember against Newcastle um, round uh, Stevens Day last year. Uh, he stepped up. He played alongside um, Van Dyke and Lovren. I remember. And uh, he looked very good, as well as obviously the Chelsea game that everyone, I'm sure everyone's seen, you know, pocked at Timo Werner. But I was thinking, I will just run through, I'll run through a few of the games that we missed Van Dijk for since he joined, just to, you know, let you know how we got on. So, so he missed, he actually missed the first two games after he'd been signed. He was signed injured and he missed uh, Burnley away, which we won 2-1. Uh, Ragnar Klavan scored in the last minute. Uh, if anyone remembers him, big props. Cool. <laughs> and the um, the last game that he's missed through injury was the game we bet Man City four three at Anfield. That was a that was a good game, wasn't it? It was a good game. So I don't think he's gonna be. It, it sounds silly because Virgil Van Dijk is such a uh, phenomenal player. So I'm not speaking bad on Van Dijk when I say this. I think I just think it's the adaptability of this Liverpool squad. I don't think you're gonna miss him as massively as you miss Allison. That is true, yeah. And especially with um, with Joe Gomez now playing at centre back as opposed to right back where he would have been like last season, season before. Now they have Nico Williams as cover for Trent Alexander Arnold, which is much better than if it had been Gomez as the only cover at right back as well. Yeah. So I mean what what's your next do you know your next game off the top of your head? Next game, Sheffield United. At, well, Ajax, obviously, tomorrow night. But Premier League, Sheffield yeah. United, Saturday, 8 o'clock. I mean, that's not... I, having watched a little bit of Sheffield United this season, they don't look <laughs> they don't look the side that they were for most of last season at the minute. No, and they don't. I was a huge Chris Wilder fan last year as well. Yeah, I just don't think they've recruited especially well. But we'll get on to Sheffield United in a minute. Uh, Everton, though, dogged. I think would be the word I would use to describe them, the way they got back into the game. True, true. I thought it was very, thought it was very good. Dominic Calvert-Lewin is yes. just, he was already looking a classy striker with bags of potential. He's now beginning to fulfil that. And, um, I mean, for, for England, uh, especially having Harry Kane and Dominic Calvert-Lewin banging in goals for fun at the minute. Yes, yes. It's exciting times for them. But I think Everton looked, they look, they look like a wonderful side at the minute. 
definitely. And Calvert Lewin playing like a modern day Van Basten, you know, with the aerial ability, the pace, the power, and the height behind him as well. No doubt he definitely could be in for a contender at the start of the Euros next summer, I reckon. 100% no, it's going to be having to pick between Harry Kane and Dominic Calvert Lewin. Harry Kane <laughs> also had an excellent start to yes. the season. It's not a bad but, choice. Uh, it's not a bad choice at all, but you sound a little bit down when have when you have to talk about Everton. Are you all right? <laughs> I'm crying. I'm crying. Don't worry. I'll power through. Let's get on to the offside. It was against Mane. Perfect. Um, yes. uh, Richarlison had already been <laughs> sent off for, for being an idiot. Yeah. And, <laughs> and Thanks for saying it. Firstly, I think we could both agree it was an offside. Uh, yeah, I mean, according to the rules of the Premier League and the offside rule in general, it is offside, but, you know, margins, do you know what I mean? You're talking you're talking millimetres at the most. And even when you like look back at the pictures, it's still hard to work out exactly what is offside. I don't think anybody knows. It's reached a point where like VAR has now turned offside into kind of making a judgment call to millimeters because you, you're going by the letter of the law and which is now basically been get your ruler out <laughs> is any part of this human's body or now so beneath the armpit uh, past and it's just i think it's just just sucks the fun out of it like i know yeah. it it's offside technically but it's really boring way to be offside exactly exactly especially when as you can imagine i'm running around the room celebrating uh you know shouting <laughs> shouting the house down uh, and then when i come back into the room and i see <laughs> you know it's gone to VAR, <laughs> it's sort of like again i know it's the rules and i'm not saying it wasn't offside you know what i mean but it kind of it takes away every time we you score a goal and you're like you know is it is, can, I, can i celebrate and then you go yeah. no you can't and uh, no you haven't won the merseyside derby you've drawn it again just like you have for the last four seasons in a row i go to some park <laughs> it's just i think i'm just with gary lineker on this point it just points out it just sucks the fun out it sucks the life out of the game a little bit because as you say you've got a goal unless you, your player is scoring a 25 yard screamer in the closing <laughs> minutes a la lanzini then you <laughs> You can't, you're right, you can't celebrate because you watch you score, you watch your, your team score and you go, okay, oh good, I can celebrate. <laughs> or, yeah, exactly. Okay, and I just don't think, I don't know how you implement it doesn't look at these fine margins yeah. so closely. Well, it's the offside rule, isn't it? It's it's the offside rule that has to change. The VAR has technically done nothing wrong. Mm. It's, it's just the rule. It's such a, like, again, fine margins rule. You, that you can't go like technology you can kind of see do you know what i mean but offside is like again i know it's again millimeters for both but somehow goal line technology is so blatantly obvious but offside isn't i don't know i don't know how that happens yeah i don't i i just think i need to stop with all the colored lines on the screen and <laughs> maybe I, I don't know how you how you do it so it's fair but i think maybe we're going to reach the point where offside changes just where you're offside so a certain portion of you has to be offside i think that would be more fun for everyone that's true but i've I always know. thought it was feet i always thought the rule was how where the feet are positioned do you know what I mean? before var came in maybe do it so that if your entire if one of your entire feet is offside then you're offside yeah because like just something something better so we can bring a bit more excitement back like, I know then you're still going to have the millimetres of is this person's heel past this other person. But it'll be a lot easier because you'd be like, is there daylight between their foot and the other person's True. foot? If there isn't, then... Yeah, no. I don't want to sound very, like, boring, lazy pundit, but, you know, what happened to giving the attacker, you know, <laughs> the right yeah. way, if you know what I mean? I think VAR just straight away killed that because originally they wouldn't have got a second look at it. Exactly. They would have just had to make a judgment call. And uh, that, God, don't we miss those days? Remember whenever we were shouting and screaming because they <laughs> were offside and now and now we're sat here I know. moaning because he and wasn't, even, but it's not fun. <laughs> same with Van Dyke in the first half. If you look at that, 
it's still it's a, still a very close call when you look back at it. Again, you're talking you're talking millimeters, and Pickford not getting sent off after you know the whistle been blown. Man United are getting penalties after full time, and Liverpool yeah. aren't getting them after you know after the ball goes out of play. It's ridiculous. Yeah, but it's because we hadn't had a penalty that entire match. So. <laughs> we need That's we need great. them, <laughs> but we can't spend the entire time on uh, on Liverpool. I'm just going to ask you Not one options. question, which is from it comes from a quote from Danny Murphy. I don't know if you've seen it or not, who said that Virgil van Dijk is the best defender he has ever seen. Right. Well, again, it may be in a few years' time, but can you really say van Dijk's the best defender ever when he's he's had two good seasons, two like really good seasons, obviously, and won a Premier League and a Champions League? If you give it another couple of years, mm-hmm. then we can judge how it's gone. I don't think it's fair to say that after this amount of time. I don't... Like it, there's so many wonderful players out there. Like because my knee-jerk reaction when it, <laughs> we talk about best defenders ever isn't Nemanja Vidic. It's, it's I straight away go to Sergio Ramos. That is true. And he's Cheers. still playing, and he's still an absolutely exceptional footballer and an absolute beast. He looks like he's straight off the set of 300 at the minute. But... There is there is nothing. There's nothing he can't do either. He scores goals. He can take penalties. He's mm. A captain, he's a leader. Do you know what I mean? There's nothing Sergio Ramos can't do. But then we're also comparing uh, a career to, as you say, a few good seasons. That is true. So. Although Van Dijk has had very good seasons, maybe maybe the best season that we've seen. Remember, we went that like calendar year without being dribbled past, which is just a mental start in itself. Yeah, but then it was the same to go to United, which I've not done yet this entire podcast. Uh, <laughs> I won't let you. It was, what was it? It was Vidic 0809 or something. Who when, just Torres, had... when Torres had him on strength. Torres always had him on strength. So I don't know. <laughs> <He> probably... <laughs> There's some, there some mental block when Vidic saw Fernando Torres. It was That's so strange. Ooh, what a game that was. Oh. We'll move on. We'll move on. We'll go that today. But, but I'll uh, come back to that. Don't worry. Let's move on to a side who cannot defend for love nor money and would probably pay <laughs> about 300 million for Virgil van Dijk right now R- literally right now even though he's super injured uh that is Chelsea who wonderful in attack absolutely exceptional looked like they were going to just batter Southampton when they quickly took a 2-0 lead and end up drawing three all ridiculous isn't it and still Kepa is still starting what's happening I have no idea, but Chelsea have won two of their opening five games after spending over well north of 200 million. Exactly, exactly. When you bring them players like Timo Werner in particular, he was a player at Liverpool that I was so desperate to sign, and I was a little bit bitter when we didn't get him. I was actually jealous when Chelsea signed him, do you know what I mean? Oh yeah, I completely agree. He's an absolutely fabulous, fabulous striker, and he's stuck out on the left for most of the time. Which I know he did for Leipzig as well at times, but yes. it all just seems in in a in a little bit of a mess, really. Like I know they're scoring for fun. Havertz uh, hasn't really got going yet. Zayic is obviously only just coming from injury. Chilwell has looked all right. Thiago Silva is he already injured or something? But yeah, I don't think maybe. he's been playing at the minute. No, he didn't stay yesterday. Anyways, he was on yeah. the bench. I think he was just rested. Like their best player so far is arguably Mason Mount I'm a huge fan of Mason Mount and T- Tammy Abraham mm. I just Don't think it's going to look in. but I'm going to read you something that uh, Cesar Aspilicueta right. uh, which is easy for me to say <laughs> <Long day. laughs> I know that the, did you hear the thing from Lampard a few years ago where they said that they just called him Dave because none of them could say his name <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but this is a direct quote in the press conference before the Sevilla game. Uh, when you're weak defensively, sometimes we feel like we have to score three or four each game. Wow. And so that's he's calling himself. Himself, weak exactly. <laughs> exactly. He started the game. Like we've got we've got Chelsea this weekend. That and is true. I'm that game, yeah. I know that defensively we aren't up to much, uh, although we look a ton better against Newcastle. I'm kind of rubbing my hands a little bit, thinking, well, we're going to get a ton of good chances. Exactly. 
he and the thing see the couple like I what i sorry go on sorry what i can't work out is you've got aspilicueta who you know he's an international player you've got kepa arisa blaga who was keeping david de Gea out of the spain team which is a mental thing to think about and you know you got christensen zuma chilwell like these aren't bad players maybe chilwell isn't you know the best left back in the premier league but he's still a good player as yeah. well as Kante, they've got who was a few years ago the best DM in the Premier League by some considerable distance. Well, he was the best in Europe <clears> for <throat> a while. Like he would have started for any team in the world. I think he's so often played out of position. I do not understand for the life of me, and I know I'm I'm not a football coach, I'm not a manager, and like Sarri and Lampard have like a lifetime of experience between them. But I still don't understand why Kante is pushed up so Jorginho can play DM. Exactly. I don't like Jorginho. Exactly. (laughs) I'm sure he's a nice bloke. I don't mean that personally. (laughs) But he so often looks like, because he can't, he can't sprint. He can't run. He can take a good penalty. Yeah. And And what do you want from your defensive midfielders? He's literally like a quarterback in the nfl where all he does is stand in one space and i know there's more to nfl than 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 that but he just stands okay. still and it's just so bizarre why he's starting you can probably hear my dog in the background now <laughs> but, but still Jorginho is a good footballer pep Guardiola wanted him the summer that Maurizio sari went out to napoli and said no i'm taking him he's not going to city he's coming with me to chelsea Pep, so again, also, Pep also wanted Maguire and Alexis Sanchez. So. <laughs> and he signed John Stones. But he's a good he's a good coach. Yeah, he's he's a he's a wonderful manager, but this how can you spend that much money on attacking players when last season all year everyone knew how weak they were defensively? True. Yeah, I can't agree with I completely agree with that. And they still have Christian Pulisic. As well as that, he didn't. They didn't even sign him this year. Yeah, they signed it like last summer. I know they had the transfer ban, but they had the Pulisic deal wrapped up in January, and they also because they had Kovacic on loan, they were able mental, to sign it, it permanently. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a transfer ban by name alone. But uh, I I don't understand the way this Chelsea side set up. Sometimes it, and I think Southampton at times looked like they were going to win the game. True. But we are talking about the players. Does some of that blame have to go to the manager? I think it does in the recruitment side of things because he was screaming out for for these players. And towards the end of the transfer deadline day, there was no talk of them signing a big centre-half after the Koulibaly deal fell through for City. Chelsea were on about splashing 60, 70 million on Declan Rice. Like, he's a, he's a great player. He's and... also a mid- midfielder. <laughs> yeah, but he's also not a defender. And Thiago Silva, as f- incredible a player as he's been his whole career and still is, he is 36. Exactly. Right. Credit to him for trusting these players like Kurt Zuma, who looked like he was going to take, like, set the world on fire not long ago, but then had awful injury problems. But when your captain is calling himself <laughs> weak defensively, like... Not a There's good issues sign. there. There is yeah. big issues at, at the exactly. minute. And two wins from the opening five games after that amount of expenditure. A lot of other Chelsea managers would have been sacked already. That is very true. Remember Di Matteo won the Champions League. That didn't <laughs> didn't give him any reassurance. Yeah. No, but Southampton credit for the fight back. Danny Ings. Is true. Still Danny up. Ings, love that man. Yeah. <laughs> of course. <laughs> right. For for the guy who lost uh was his name Hassel? Sorry if I'm saying that wrong, but uh, <laughs> Ralph Has- Hasselhuten. Hasselhuten losing nine nil to Leicester last season. I yeah. think I don't think he gets enough credit for the way he's turned his time at this club around. That's true. That's true. I completely agree. Yeah, I think he's a great manager. Yeah, he's doing great things at Southampton. I don't think they recruited particularly well yeah. in the summer, but I also don't know how much money they had available after everything yeah. that's happened. So it's perhaps a bit unfair. And I think bringing Theo Walcott back to the club, good signing. Yeah, yeah, not a bit, but still Premier League quality player. And uh, so moving on from there to Man City, Arsenal. Uh, Arsenal would have needed about seven years and a letter from the Queen to score. 
Um, <laughs> Man City <laughs> looking, they look way more solid defensively than they have done recently. And I actually thought they were going to lose. I thought Pep was going to get done by Arteta again. Yeah. But I don't. Arsenal would have, they, they, they could have just parted the Man City players and Arsenal still would have hit the bar. <laughs> Man City are just, they're just such a good team, aren't they? Even when they don't play their best, they can still beat you. Handy right. at, home, at home. Easy. And Arsenal didn't have a party from the start, but he did come on for a brief little cameo. He, he didn't particularly get up to much. Yeah. Uh, this Arsenal side, again, for all the credit Arteta and everyone gets for the way that they look when they play a mid-table to to bottom side the moment they come up against the big six and i'm not to talk about the community shield like <laughs> get, get the fuck out with that <laughs> they come unstuck that is true that's true they haven't looked they haven't looked dominant in any of the games i don't think so far three from five but you know they needed to really put down america against a man city who aren't at their strongest you know they have a lot of injuries and a lot of players missing out yeah, they chucked Diaz and uh, Ake out there as a two, and they looked all right. I think Nathan Ake is a fabulous footballer. True. And they're they playing um, Joao Cancelo in midfield, which is a very strange thing, isn't it? He's a right back. Yeah, he played a really funny formation. Carragher was talking about it on Monday Night Football. About It was like a 3-3, free, free, like a really strange formation. It was very strange. Four but... up front as well. Yeah, like they could have done it for ages. Like Man City going forward didn't look at their strongest. Uh, Arsenal did look half decent defensively. Uh, Raheem Sterling did score a good goal, but I, yeah, very good finish. I feel underrated finish. People aren't talking about how good a finish it was. It was on his weak foot. Yeah, people just kind of have a blind spot a little bit when it comes to Raheem Sterling. A lot of people just don't like him, and I know that he he's. His shot to goal ratio isn't great. He misses a lot of chances, but he's got so many goals. And another player like a Virgil Van Dijk who never misses a game. True, true. I saw a stat that um, he is in the Premier League. He's the most goal, goal contributions since the turn of last season. What well, that? Why isn't that getting talked about more? Yeah, I, don't, I have no idea why. But I saw a thing the other day that he hasn't since. The season he made his debut for Liverpool, which was a long time ago now. 2012-13, I remember well. <laughs> yeah, that season he played three times. And since then, he hasn't played less than 36 games in a season. <laughs> of course, He's... yeah. He burst into the first team that season. Uh, we came second, of course. And then the season after, he was really the main man after Suarez left with Sturridge's injuries. So, like, he's, he's had a lot of, you know, kind of pressure on him from a young age. And I think he's still up to it. Absolutely, he's had a wonderful career. But I think the only thing missing is a European trophy at this point, True. or even a the... even a semi final. Just just saying, <laughs> <laughs> they've only got as far as Moyes did with United. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a great season that was! <laughs> <laughs> I, I loved it. I loved every second of it. Anyways, yes, he's a good player. <laughs> and again, on on his weak foot with that finish, I honestly don't think Salah would have scored that. Salah has one of the worst right foots I've seen in in football. It's like it's like when you're playing FIFA and you start off with the default character, you know, before you um, <laughs> boost any of the attributes on their weak foot. Brutal. <laughs> so like when you accidentally press cross and so shoot. <laughs> yeah, Salah's weak foot is like when you're playing Pez, when you forget you're playing Pez. <laughs> but good, good win for Pepe, needed that. Uh, a little bit after a draw against Leeds and getting hammered against Leicester. Leicester, who we will come to in a minute, because <laughs> what on earth is going on there? Uh, but the last game on Saturday, uh, Manchester United against Newcastle. A lot of people, including me, were a little bit nervous for this one. <laughs> Weren't sure how we were going to play. Went down 1-0 early after a Luke Shaw own goal and then absolutely dominated the game which was yeah. weird. Uh, we I, didn't equalise the ruled out for offside, and it was the big man. It was Slabhead. <laughs> Got us back level. He, I, I honestly thought, when Newcastle took the lead, I thought, brilliant. You know, rubbing the palms. This is it. <laughs> Ollie's at the wheel, and the car's in the ditch. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but, um, 
But no, to be fair, you came back. Yeah, I say we absolutely dominated the game when the lineup came out as well. No Pogba, Pogba dropped. Uh, yeah, for yeah. it's not kicked off yet at time of recording, but Pogba's also dropped against PSG to the bench <laughs> as well. Uh, so don't know what's going on there. But after seeing his start of the season, I'm not massively surprised. Oli is a little bit uh, much sterner than other managers would be on form at times. He's not afraid to drop someone, other than David De Gea. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but McTominay and Fred ruled the midfield with Bruno. Uh, Anthony Martial was obviously is suspended for three games because uh, he touched Lamella. <laughs> Gotta kill the child. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was like when Fergie said, who was he talking about? He kicked the ball at oh, Van Persie. And he Williams. said he could have killed Honestly, him. Wasn't it? Yeah, oh, that was brilliant. I loved Ashley Williams from then on. Until he yeah. went to Everton. Okay, anyways. Uh, but Bruno Fernandes, honestly, I've been thinking, could he be the most influential signing uh, for one club since Van Dijk signed for Liverpool? I think he's certainly the best signing we've made uh, since <laughs> Fergie left. Like, other than, actually, that's a bit unfair, actually. Anthony Martial came in really young. Zlatan as, Ibrahimovic, he was a very good signing. There's Zlatan. There's been a few. There's been about yeah. four. There's been about <laughs> 28 others. <laughs> in about 20 years, yeah. No, I think wan Bruno, and uh, Martial were the first three that spring to mind. Zlatan as well for that first season. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think they're the first. Can't really think of anyone else that's perhaps because David de Gea was a Fergie signing. Yep. Um, Alexis Sanchez. <laughs> Mar- Marwan Fellaini. Yeah, they were, they were solid signings. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> I actually I used to hate playing against Fellaini. Oh God, it gives me nightmares thinking about him in that head. Anyway, Bruno Fernandez. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Tw- uh, so I started twenty six goal contributions in twenty seven games mental that's that's what they were like Salah I think even Salah isn't you know a goal a game sort of contribution I think that's not fair with anyone I think at the minute Bruno starts for certainly most sides in in the world that's I think true. he would get a start I think a lot of sides would adapt to include him even if they've got other people but I think we talk about the elite sides for Bayern would they drop Muller for him I'm not completely convinced they would because yeah. Muller's ridiculous and so maybe not buying, but you could certainly make a case for it. Barcelona, I think anyone starts for them. Oh. At the yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Madrid, absolutely. Even Liverpool, there's, you know, maybe he, which... can, he can drop deep and be a bit of a shit. So <laughs> he probably would work in a club side. Which would be nice. With Thiago and Henderson, obviously Jordan Henderson's the best footballer in the world. But you know, <laughs> we could we could find a place on the bench for Bruno. That'd be nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, great great turnaround. Some late goals. Rashford getting a goal as well is good. A lot of players missing. No Cavani yet. Tells came on for a brief cameo. I don't even know if I'm saying his name right. Is it Tellers or Tells? Tellers, Te- isn't it? Alex Tellers. Alex Tellers. That'll do. I think Alex Tesla. Don't call me on that. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good attempt. <laughs> uh, Good three points and much needed for Oli. I, I don't think he will get a result tonight against PSG. <laughs> Watch him <laughs> do it, though. Watch does, him do it. Be... Oh, he, he did, did last it last time. time. Which I still can't believe. <laughs> you know? Last time we had a midfield three of Scott McTominay, Fred and Andreas Pereira. Wow. <laughs> and VAR. VAR was very prominent in that game, I remember. <laughs> Just remember Neymar in the crowd. Like I know Neymar is a fabulous footballer, but I am one of those people that unnecessarily hates him. <laughs> that, is true. That, that's, that is fair enough. He is he is a very good player, but when you consider the amount of money he was signed for, it, it it's ludicrous. <laughs> he he plays about twenty five games a season for PSG at the minute. Right, and you know besides last year, obviously Champions League final. Before that. They hadn't got to a semi-final either, similar to City. So if they don't win the Champions League with him and Mbappe, I they think the signing has to be seen as a failure. I think Mbappe, he's kind of, there's already rumours that he's leaving next summer. And I think that's possibly why Real Madrid didn't spend any money this summer. True. Because they were probably saying, hey Zidane, hang on for this season with this squad, it's still decent. Like yep. Modric, is, he's not quite pension. <laughs> and uh, like next summer, you can have the keys keys to the bank vault 
and okay. I think Mbappe will go in. I think Pogba will probably go in. Yep. And Mbappe, yeah. Real Madrid. Yeah, Sadio Mane. So that's like out ahead of ourselves. <laughs> 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 Going to win the league. Come on, boys. Uh, on to Sunday, Sheffield United against Fulham. Fulham are going down. <laughs> Never been more sure of anything in my life. You know, Even. I I really like Alexander Mitrovic, favorite players. I just love like the aggression and just so bad. <laughs> power. I know, but he's like he's good bad. Do you know what I mean? Oh, oh. And it, uh, he's in for me he's in that Dwight Gale category I've said it before where he's <laughs> far too good for the championship but there's something missing in the Premier League every single time it's not quite there <laughs> you're on the Dwight Gale Liverpool and no one else Benteke is in that list as well <laughs> I don't know what this Benteke makes anymore <laughs> the poor guy is just oh how we made money back on signing Christian Benteke I'll never know, <laughs> but I'm happy. I'm happy. And that's the main thing. But Fulham did take the lead. Uh, Lookman uh, got a goal, signed for, on loan from Leipzig, back in the Premier League again, because he yeah. can't cut it in the Bundesliga. Former uh, Harrison player. Yeah. Uh, Sheffield United, they look a bit of a shell of the side last season. Like they got a lucky pen, uh, pen in kind of injury time, I think, that Billy Sharp scored. Billy Sharp, he's had a great career. Uh, is still scoring goals, but I don't quite know what's happened at Sheffield. They just don't uh, quite look up to it yet. I think the only positive there is the kit. I <laughs> so, They're looking good. Yeah. At least they <laughs> look the... good when they're not winning. <laughs> uh, Fulham, though, awful signings. Lookman's fine. They had a nightmare that <laughs> Owner was tweeting about how they failed to find to sign five centre halves. Oh, I love that. I love that. Oh, could you imagine Jordan Henderson out and saying, "I know he's not the owner, obviously, but just imagine him coming out and saying, oh, we were.'" Yeah, we tried to sign Marcus Rojo, but it <laughs> fell apart at the last second. <laughs> Why didn't they sign Marcus Rojo? You could have him. <laughs> Phil Jones, he's not even in our he's not even in our Premier League squad. You can have him. He won a title. He's got as many <laughs> titles as Mo Salah. He's got as many titles as Adrian. There he's you go. <laughs> many Premier Leagues as Liverpool. <laughs> and Adrian has won more trophies Liverpool than Luis Suarez. How mental is that? <laughs> or Suarez. I just thought I'd put that in. I thought I'd just let that sink in, much like Suarez is Dandanovic. Way. <laughs> Uh, Crystal Palace mixed start to the season for them. That well, an incredible been... underdog victory in the opening day. Rocky levels with a three-one <laughs> winner. <laughs> Not opening day, sorry. That was opening day for us. It wasn't opening day for them. Um, I do apologise. It was their second match, wasn't it? But uh, uh, a one-all draw against Brighton. Brighton, who signed another man with as many titles as Liverpool, in Danny Welbeck. <laughs> oh, he might have more than one actually. I don't. No, when he was, debuted, he was with I don't for a while, wasn't he? I meant oh eight or nine, so he's been around since then. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm glad you're here with all this knowledge off the top Sorry. of your head. <laughs> Sorry, I've watched a lot of Premier League years. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, Br- Brighton, they've made some good signings. I really, I think their signing of Veltman is inspired and super cheap. Apparently, only cost like a million. Adam uh, Lallana, even you know, yeah. not the not the same player he was, but a leader, if nothing else. Yeah, they've added some experience and some leadership to the side. Danny Welbeck, although he's a bit of a, a butt of the joke at times these <laughs> days, he's still a very experienced striker who, if you can get him playing, which has been his problem since he left United, he will score you goals. True. But it's that bit where he's available for five, missing for ten. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, he's gone to international tournaments. You know, he's, again, not a bad footballer. No, he's a great footballer. Like I remember when Van Howe sold him, I was surprised that we let him go. Yeah. But then when you watch what happened to him at Arsenal, he did have some bright moments. He scored against us at one point, and he he yes. did do some good things. It was just it, yeah, those good things yeah. were very limited. That goal against Leicester when they thought they won the league in February, I remember. I remember that <laughs> one well. 
<laughs> but Lamptey at right back, again, he looks amazing, doesn't he? Absolutely phenomenal. I think there's a reason that Bayern uh, were possibly in for him during the summer. He's looked absolutely spectacular. Exactly. Another great right back in English. In, in, in that English never football. ending list. <laughs> yeah, the never ending list of right backs. Yeah. Uh, he, I don't think he's going to be at Brighton for very long, but he's certainly going to help them do some good things this season. I think Brighton are going to have a good season. True, true. Maybe a little cup run. For Palace, Zaha, keeping him was essential, even though he, he doesn't want to go and basically what it is is no one will pay for him. <laughs> how is he still at... The, I mean, I know it's because of his transfer fee, but how is he still at Crystal Palace? I think at this point, because he's going, he's going to be 29 this season. Mental. I think perhaps it's time for him to just be, <clears throat> become a Palace legend. Just score some cracking goals. Might as well. He's a great player on his day. He, he did nothing but... Oh, am I allowed to say he shagged Moise's yeah. daughter? <laughs> well, he just have. Well, he yeah. was he was Alex Ferguson's last ever signing at United. There's a little knowledge for you. He was, and he flopped a bit. Uh, he did it with Moise's daughter. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, God. he did he did flop, and he went on loan a few times. He didn't look great. And he went back to Palace, and he's a fantastic footballer, but the price tag <clears throat> holds him back. But then you've got to ask, why did he keep signing? deals <laughs> true because if there was no release clause in those deals yeah. why would he keep them do you know what i mean yeah and i think palace are right to to demand the money that they, they have like they got an aaron wan on the day that we signed him looked like he cost too much now he doesn't because no, of the player yeah. he's become but i think palace are they're quite right to demand if there's no release fee true um but I think Eze, although he didn't start the weekend, he looks a great player. Yep. Good stuff from Palace. But let's get on to another nutty match because those those two were boring. One one draws. But how about a nice spicy three 0 up in the first half, three all at full time? <laughs> it was a, a London derby. Honestly, uh, Roy the Rover stuff, wasn't it? Uh, Tottenham Hotspur faced West Ham and. Tottenham looked unbelievable in the first half. Honestly, it was like something out of a goal movie or something. It was ridiculous. They went 3-0 up so early, and then just it kept going, kept going. Thought, no chance for West Ham. Then all of a sudden, they're at 3-2 in the space of about two minutes. And mm. then, I mean, we've all seen it, that Lanzini goal. It was ridiculous. Absolutely unbelievable stuff. And credit to, to the West Ham players for kind of fighting back. Spurs yeah. began to look very shaky, and the moment Bale came on for his re-debut, it was like <laughs> Spurs kind of just expected Bale to do everything. <laughs> it's like when you're at work and you know someone's a bit of a job's worth, so they'll do everything and you just chill. <laughs> oh, I'm having flashbacks. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> but remember when Gareth Bale first signed for Tottenham? He went something like 20-odd games, though, to win. Is this the uh, is the curse coming back? <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Just, just the a very much a tale of two clubs against us. They Spurs were ruthless, absolute animals. Then oh, for the first half yeah, against West yeah. Ham, it was much the same, and the second half against West Ham, it was just Jekyll and Hyde. And I'm not taking anything away from West Ham; they battled well, yeah. but I don't think they did anything. And this isn't me taking away from them, but I don't think they did anything special to get back in the game. True. I mean, David Moyes is just the best football manager ever. <laughs> he was the man who replaced the best manager in English football. And now he's finally showing, you know, about eight years later why he got that job. <laughs> yeah, he's doing good things at West Ham. And they, they've invested. On, on Skype. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They've invested in in him as well and actually given him something to work with. Yeah. And I I do think Spurs are going to have a great season. I would not be in any way surprised if Jose broke their trophy voodoo. True. He's known for it. Yeah, the League Cup. He's still in there with that League (laughs) Cup. League Cup. He he always wins the League Cup. Cup. (laughs) He just needs a trophy. Spurs just need a trophy. Jose doesn't. He's he's got a million. But... (laughs) And Tottenham, you know, they're, you know, they've been a top, top six side for about ten years at this point. Haven't won a trophy in that time. 
2008 Carling Cup, Jonathan Woodgate header against Jonathan Chelsea, actually. Woodgate. Oh, That's the name for you. <laughs> the player that Virgil van Dijk could have been. <laughs> he might be now. He might never recover from this injury. <laughs> Don't say that. Come on. I need some hope. <laughs> but I think this this points to good things for West Ham and for Spurs. I think I think West Ham just need to start a little bit better. <laughs> it matches <laughs> but defensive frailties all over the place. I don't know much right. about this uh Joe Roden that Spurs have signed from Swansea, but I thought he was a podcaster. <laughs> just like, hey, hey guys, you seen the deer video? <laughs> but, uh, nutty match, one that only the Premier League can give you. This season, especially. You'll notice so far we got two, uh, three matches left. Not a single nil-nil draw. Mental. Yeah, well, there is one. <laughs> but we're not. Uh, I'm not even going to give it the time of day. <laughs> Could you but, imagine spending 14 quid on that game? <laughs> like, oh god, yeah, like, we need to touch on this pay per view bollocks. <laughs> the last few matches are pretty boring, so we'll cut it in now. Like, no, no, I will not. Newcastle v Man United was on pay per view, <laughs> and I just I can't imagine who's paying for it. Do you know what I mean? I mean, I imagine older people with Sky because, you know, if you're of a certain generation, you know, it's on the internet, isn't it? Everything is. I think rich people are, but like, I'm not going to pay for a pay-per-view match. I'm not going to tell no. you how I watched Man United v Newcastle. At <laughs> <laughs> least come calling. <laughs> yeah. The FBI just break down my door. But... <laughs> oh, not again. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just r- robbery absolute robbery of matches that were free they were going to be free that or they were going to be on amazon prime and a lot of people have amazon prime not for the video stuff they got it because of the delivery so it's kind of like it? you're not really no one pays for amazon for the video content <laughs> well, <laughs> it's just a bonus you're talking 14 quid for west brom versus burnley if you were to live in america you can get like uh, the zone a uh, company over there you get 14 quid for all the sports and you get everything in one place. It's ridiculous. Yeah, like you, you can live in other countries and watch our league for way cheaper. I know my friend Rahul lives in India and he can watch all the Premier League. I think he said for about five bucks a month. <laughs> like he gets every, he gets pretty much and they get the matches that we don't get because for some reason at three o'clock, no one's allowed to watch football in the UK. <laughs> that Yeah. Do you know the? Do you know the why that is? Well, obviously before the fans were, obviously before the restrictions, obviously it's because in the 1970s, when um, well the 1980s when football was trying to be broadcast on TV more, there was fears that three o'clock games just wouldn't be gone to by fans because they'd just watch them all at home as opposed to going to the game, which is just mental That's to think about. Such backwards thinking because if you've got a chance to go to a match or if you love going to watch your team, you're gonna go watch your team. I know. And also, I think it's a bit arrogant on the part of the Premier League. There are like there's 72 other league clubs that people support. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean to be horrible to Sheffield United, but there's not a lot of Sheffield United fans. <laughs> I know, I know, it's ridiculous, isn't it? And you know, you're talking the 1980s. That's that's 30 years ago, nearly 40. Why hasn't this been changed? Just broadcast them, just broadcast them for everyone. Or if the Premier League really wants to modernise, don't go to pay-per-view because it's not the 1990s. <laughs> like, just make your own streaming service. Make it cheap. Like, you can make it cheap for everyone because you're going to get millions of subscribers. Could you imagine, like, Premier League flicks, so to speak, <laughs> where you could watch all the games live and you could go back through previous seasons and watch any game you want? I think that's what they should do. That I would be... I pay 14 quid a month for that or whatever, which th- it's still a lot of money, but I would pay for. I think they should keep their current TV deal and mm-hmm. keep the matches that are going to be broadcast. But all those three o'clock games, put them on this new streaming service. You can make it, you make it like, make it copy the WWE. I don't know if you're a wrestling fan, but you can get everything. Yep. You can get everything from the WWE for nine ninety nine a month. <laughs> Nine ninety nine. Nine ninety nine, brother. But you can't like why can't they keep the matches that are gonna be on TV on TV so you get that hundred million? 
and then put all the three o'clock games, all the ones that aren't going to get broadcast, on this thing that costs 10 quid a month. And then you can create your own content. That pe- You can make some shit shows or some shit documentaries. Exactly. And yeah. pop them on there. People are going to watch them because we're all idiots. That's but what like... the WWE did. Originally, it was just the pay-per-views. But they realised, you know, most people have these on DVD already. We need to give them something new. Yeah. And even if they just gave us, like... You know, shoddy background stuff with like I don't know Joe Gomez and Joe Matip doing Mister and Misses or something. I mean, I still watch that. Do you know what I mean? Oh, we should get Roy Keane and Jamie Carragher <laughs> boxing match. Finally, it should happen on this on Premier League fix or flicks rather. I would love Roy Keane on like a goggle box. I would happily pay fourteen quid oh, a week for that. Roy Keane watching Bake Off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do me a favor that's my best that's my impression of Roy Keane <laughs> <laughs> oh, but uh yeah there, there's our we fixed it there you go have that I don't know who's in charge of the Premier League anymore. <laughs> I can't remember the bloke's name but <laughs> can we trademark that <laughs> yeah sure let's do it uh speaking of Jekyll and Hyde as we did with Spurs it is Leicester against Aston Villa the wonderful Aston Villa, who are playing <laughs> some sublime football, great signings, all the credit in the world, keeping Grealish. Ross Barkley looks inspired. Ollie Watkins looks unbelievable. I'm sure you've still got nightmares about him. Um, <laughs> and, Leic- Forget nightmares. and Leicester City, who, unless they've got Jamie Vardy, are a relegation side. I know, with Kelechi Iheanacho as your backup. I mean, he had that good season at City off the bench, but what's he done since? <laughs> absolutely nothing i think leicester from january um onwards have won i think it was 11 matches competitive matches since january wow it's something like that i might be a bit one or two off there but their yeah. form and some of those wins were fa cup matches yeah but that city game that's all that's all people remember what is going on because they were 14 points clear of man united on new year's day exactly they then and bear in mind Leicester were third and Man United were fifth and then they don't have Champions League football because they botched it and now yeah they beat Manchester City wonderful win for them but they've not scored since in the two matches since they've not scored and they conceded four three to West Ham and now one to Villa in the dying moments what, what is going on? What is what is it? This you're a Liverpool fan, obviously. Is this a, just a Brendan <laughs> Rodgers thing? <laughs> well, I'm a huge fan of Brendan Rodgers, <laughs> but he would go obviously with us. He had that one really good season, and then once he lost his key players, he was never able to like adapt to sort of you know p- play as a team when he lost Suarez and Jamie Verdi could be his Luis Suarez for this Leicester team, and just without him, they look a completely different team. Yeah, but they have, they they've made some good looking signings like that under or have you say it doesn't look so bad the the centre half that they signed whose name uh, yeah. I know it's got a load of F's in it but Fofana Fofana sorry for saying that wrong sorry <laughs> Fo uh, and uh, they got uh, Castagni he's a right back but they're playing him at left back because that's that's apparently what we do these days yeah. the school of Gareth <laughs> Gareth Southgate which is just get many <laughs> right backs in your side as you can. <laughs> Even Justin as well. I'm a huge fan. And Johnny Evans. As much Another as, Premier League winner. He was amazing. He was wanted at Man City by Pep Guardiola. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Again, <laughs> he's a good player. And Casper Schmeichel, I rate him very highly. And oh, yeah, Thiel- what a player. Tielemans, That's... one of the... You know, he has potential to be one of the best midfielders in the league. Yeah, he was the player that we apparently inquired about, but I don't know if that's true because apparently we inquire about most of the world's population. (laughs) (laughs) I think I got a call the last day, actually, yeah. Yeah, I got a trial, but they said I was too good. (laughs) Uh, The team's there, but just without Vardy, it's just, it's like a different side. And they're genuinely, it's not an exaggeration to say they are teetering on relegation form at times. They definitely were in the second half of last season. They were losing. They lost more matches than they drew. Yep. No, yeah, they, yeah. Only, they only won, I think, three or four league matches from January onwards. Like, That's true. This, is it going to be another disaster? Like, 
I know disaster seems wrong because they did come fifth, but it's the way they came fifth. That's true, yeah. It I like honestly, as a Leicester fan, I can't see that fifth place finish as you know, I wouldn't celebrate that. You've you I like I don't want to say bottled it, because again, fifth for Leicester, if you'd said that at the start of last season would have been they would have taken that in a heartbeat. But exactly the manner in which they finish fifth is just it's not it's yeah. not good enough, is it? And it's the Bournemouth game when uh, Sayinchu got red carded for booting Solanke in the back of the leg <laughs> after they conceded, just could, just could lost his head. And I think that summarises the way Leicester came fifth, was they just lost their minds. So even in that game, they went 1-0 up. And then would they conceded, was it three or four in the second half? I can't remember. Four, which. wasn't it? Dominic Solanke scored his first Premier League goals in, I think, about 10 years. Yeah, yeah, I think he retired straight <laughs> after. But, um, but let's not take anything away from Villa, whose start to the season has been unbelievable. Oh, They're only course. second on, uh, on because they got a game in hand. Exactly. No, they they have the potential to be kind of the surprise package of this season. There usually is one. And, like they just look wonderful. I th- I think the squad might end up being a little bit thin unless people can stay injury free because if Ollie Watkins goes down. Last season they played some great football, but they just didn't have a goal scorer up front. That is true, and they're the only team this season who still have their 100% winning run. So again, this isn't a bad, well, not a bad team, but this this is a good team. So maybe it's not that big a deal for Leicester. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, maybe not. Maybe it's just that Leicester have found their level a little bit, unless they got Jamie Vardy in the side when they they go up a step. But True. maybe this is just where Leicester are. They're going to be kind of a mid-table side, or True. maybe they'll turn it around. We'll we'll obviously have to find out. Uh, the last two games, West Brom drew with Burnley. Uh, boring. Leeds. <laughs> Can we go in depth on that one? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> uh, unless you, if you pay to watch it, honestly, stop listening to our podcast. <laughs> I don't want you as a listener. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Can I just say yeah. I support you? Yeah. Uh, and Leeds, usually so wonderful in attack and everything, was were stumped by a great uh, Wolf side and ended up going down one nil to Dude, them. The highlight being their Portugal Connor jersey. Cody's interview. Yeah, the yeah. highlight being Connor Cody's interview on Monday Night Football, <laughs> where he didn't realise that Kilman got man of the match instead of him. <laughs> and that was the premier league weekend i don't unless you've got anything to say about leeds v wolves i hope you've got nothing to say about west brom v burn <laughs> <laughs> where do i start no i i think we've gone i think we've gone in depth enough on that yeah so this weekend there's some there's some big games uh to come he says as he buys time to get them up <laughs> <laughs> as so, a leeds friday night football Leeds, again, a good team, not a bad team. Villa, obviously, 100% record. Could be one to look out for. Yeah, I think that would probably be the best game attacking-wise because there is there is the big matter of uh, Man United against Chelsea. Uh, we we had Chelsea's number last season, apart from one game where we lost. But we <laughs> battered them 4-0 opening day of the season, opening day of the season <laughs> last year. Don't know and what on, to expect from that. I, think, I imagine a ball draw. On paper, it's the biggest game of the weekend. But again, it's Ollie versus Frank, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, West Ham against Man City. Yeah, Man City will win. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry, West Ham, but and not you'll a probably beat Sheffield United unless they find their form from last season. But I think game of the weekend probably Arsenal Leicester. Arsenal Leicester could be good if you know Leicester, if Leicester turn plays up. their ability. Arsenal. I'm a fan of Mikel Arteta. I think I think he's got them doing bits. He looks very composed, but uh, we haven't been very composed, but we will stop <laughs> there. Anyway, uh, you can find me on Twitter at Nathan Greenaway if you want to tell me how wrong I am. Uh, you can find Project Dits uh, by just searching for it in the search bar, to be honest. And thank you very much for listening, guys. You can also find me if you want to listen to more of my stuff over at Rogue underscore Opinion. I'm always uh, on one of their shows and I've got my own podcast uh, over there as well every week but uh dara thank you thank you for joining Perfect. project Nathan, Dips. thank you for holding my hand through this that's, first that's all right and <laughs> i think i think you'll be back first of all i hope yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh where can people find you if they want to scream at you 
Um, you can find me on Twitter. I'm very new to it, so apologies, of course. At Gibbons underscore Dara. That's D-A-R-R-A-G-H, Gibbons. Oh, nice. Well, we'll be back next week to see how wrong we are about <laughs> all those predictions when the best game ends up being like West Brom Burnley doing it again. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs>